I mean, at least this is my version of the story, my, my uh, recollection of, absolutely. The of the story. I mean, the whole thing started for us. Uh, we, there was a masjid that was uh, a rental on Trade Zone before uh, the masjid on Dempsey was, was rented. And uh, we, were, we, go, we would go there as musallis and uh, pray there. And, uh, we get to know the, the community leadership. Back then, uh, Sheikh Omar Farooq was the imam of that Dang. masjid. This was how long back? This was like early 90s. Early 90s. Yeah. Maybe 1995, something like that. 90. 90? Yeah, because yeah. My, 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 my memory kind of goes, goes on and off sometimes. And uh, Alhamdulillah, we prayed there for probably a good couple of years. And then uh, a few of us got together and uh, Brother Muhammad and I, and there was other brothers that were uh, involved. Brother Rashid, Rashid Brother Rasim, yeah. Brother Riaz, I don't Rasmi. remember his last name, yeah. Brother Rasmi al Jorf, mm. and uh, probably another Brother Muhammad Hussein. A if, 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 if few people, we get together and said, okay, we need something in Milpitas. Because the, that masjid uh, was moved to uh, the first street. The first street to the charities where the Catholic charities are. Yeah. So we, we said we, we need a masjid in Milpitas. And uh, we looked and looked and looked and we found the Dempsey building. And we took the smallest possible room that we could get, that we could rent back then. It was a very small, probably fits like 30, 40 musallis. And we started started there. Uh, it was pretty, pretty basic. No structure, no nothing. Just a yeah. few guys and... MashaAllah, people started showing up. You just every week, every Friday, you see more faces, you see more people. And then within a year or two, we added another room. That, that they had like an, in, an, an indoors, uh, what, what is it like? The, that baseball. Fees, fees ball or a yeah, baseball, baseball or something yeah. like that. <laughs> so we took over that, that room and expanded, expanded in there. And then while we were there, the brothers uh, that were on Trade Zone have moved to First Street. Mm -hmm. And then Mawlana Mumtaz al Haq became the Imam over there. Mm -hmm. And we had our masjid here. Mm -hmm. So some brothers suggested that I'm a brother Khurram, Khurram yeah. Salahuddin. Yeah. He, was a, he was a very good brother. He's, mm -hmm. he's in Emirates. Khawar, Khawar. Khawar, Khawar, not Khurram, yeah. Khawar, yeah, Khawar Salahuddin. He suggested that why don't we just get together and merge, merge. the two organizations? Yeah. And we started talking. Sure enough, the two organizations merged, Al-Hilal and Dar es-Salam. Masjid Dar es-Salam is the, is the newly established one. And then the Al-Hilal organization it's merged and uh, we started working with the brothers from there. And mashallah, Mawlana Mumtaz had a lot of knowledge, a lot of, Allah gifted him with a lot of knowledge, a very good and strong personality. Skills. And uh, he was actually uh, the, the community leader for a while. When I said the two organizations more merged, merged yes. uh, from the, the Al Hilal side of the organization was led by Brother Omar Farooq, Brother Farooq Ridhan, Brother Munawar Daimi, Brother Ikram Lakhani, and also Brother Rafi Uddin. I forgot his, his last name, he passed away like last year. Uh, and they basically just decided uh, that's it. I mean, there was some discussion around. Uh, the conduct of the organization, what is going to be what, uh, around Eid, around the moon sighting, around halal meat, around uh, basic, some basic issues that we said, uh, that's fine, yeah, the brothers can, can, can apply their, uh, their uh, you know, understanding of Sharia in there, no, with no issues. And Alhamdulillah, things, things, things kept going and uh, the community started growing in that in that location. More and more people started showing up. More and more education started happening. And then we bought uh, we bought the the, the property on on Montague, as uh, the, the the warehouse on Montague, as uh, the location where we could possibly build a masjid in there. That area, because it's right across the street from uh, from Montague, was was kind of challenging. The build, being able to build, design and build and implement. For example, you had to really go under, under the highway, under uh, Montague Expressway to be able to, to build. And there were like a few challenges that presented themselves. 
and uh, the community kept debating, discussing while raising funds. Every year we would raise funds, we would go go. I learned uh, the term khususi mulaqat from my brothers, uh, from my Pakistani brothers. Is al mulaqat al khususiya in Arabic, basically special meetings. You would go with to to visit certain well-to-do brothers in the community and you know solicit them for donations. And a lot of them would come through. A lot of them would give them would give them donations to, for the sake of the masjid. And we kept we kept going until until the community was offered. Uh, D.R. Horton, I believe, uh, the, 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 the builder that started building around the old masjid, the, the old uh, location in Dempsey on, uh, on Montague. They, uh, they wanted to build and they wanted to actually buy the piece of land that we had in there and add it to their uh, development. Uh, we had a lot of negotiations with them, but the negotiations did not yield. Uh, but that opened our uh, our eyes to selling the, the property. The one the one detail I forgot to mention is with the with the help of Allah, that location, that area was converted from commercial to residential before the DR Horton started building. So that gave the value of the property a big boost in that in that area. And uh, you know we continued uh, until until. Uh, we had uh, the idea of uh, buying an existing building, buying an existing building that we could get converted to, to a masjid or to an Islamic center. And uh, the idea of this building became, uh, became, became it. We started looking and uh, this building was identified and we had like debates within the community as to can we ever get a permit to run a masjid in here? This is uh, uh, like a heavy industry zone in Milpitas. Some people told us, you're crazy. This thing is not gonna, you're never, never gonna get a permit to really have a masjid in here. And uh, we had a lot of meetings with the community, a lot of discussions, a lot of debates on the idea. And then there was like a majority of the brothers within the community in favor of buying a pre-existing building in favor of fighting the battle with the city uh, to really get permits and alhamdulillah we bought it and uh, we started uh, building relationships with the po po politicians in uh, in milpitas and you probably remember some of those because you were the spokesman for us at some point um, and uh, brother oh, yeah, yeah 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 actually it's the will of allah that put brother uh, uh, Mohsen Zafar, may Allah give him full and complete recovery, and his wife, Sister Zia, in the city. Uh, Brother Mohsen was spending a ton of time in the city, volunteering for the city work, and having him there helped pave the road for us with, uh, with the city officials and the city people. So he would uh, introduce us to the city people, he would go with us, and uh, several of us, we had to do fundraising in our own houses to really uh, support the city officials in their election campaigns. And Alhamdulillah, with the, with the help of Allah, we were able to get enough hearts converted to support the, to support the project. And uh, we we had like a, a lot of a lot of support from neighboring communities also, as far as the, you know the all the all the hearings, all the the meetings with the city. Uh, we, we probably have, have gone through three mayors uh, uh, in, in the city of Milbitis during the process of this. Uh, we have gone through uh, Henry Manayan, we have gone through Jose Astavas, we have gone through uh, Rich Tran, uh, three mayors, yeah, uh, actually, and each of them probably served two terms while we were working with them on the on the project and with the with the tawfiq of Allah with the, and the help of Allah the, we were able to convince enough people in the city to change the law the law of the city of the Midbitas was changed so that we are allowed to get to get the permit for this message so I mean I look at it and I consider it to be uh, a mu'jiza from Allah as a miracle from Allah that Allah had softened enough hearts to allow us to really get the permits and Alhamdulillah, we finally uh, got the permit 
and uh, once we got the permit, things how, started how to flow. How long did it take the whole process? Oh, I mean, from between the old building and the new building, probably eight years, right? Yeah, yeah. About eight years or eight so. Years? Yeah. So when was this intercepted? Like, when did you guys? Uh, I forget that I'm not really too good with, with dates. Three years, as, as, three as, years as, old. Three years old? Okay. Years yeah. Old. We, we started the masjid here before COVID. Right before COVID, we actually we had the, the grand opening. Okay. But we bought it a couple of years before, two or three years before. Yeah. Yeah. So we had it before. So you had to remodel, you have to yeah. Yeah. basically dismantled everything on the masjid side. Yeah. It became more like a warehouse. Yeah. Uh, no, but then, this law part that you mentioned, when did you figure out, hey, uh, the law is not on our side and we have to change Before we purchased this building, that's oh, why people, some community members oh. were actually objecting to this idea. And they told us, you're crazy. How yeah. could you buy a property yeah. that, uh, that you know is in a heavy industry area? You cannot change the law for this. Oh. But yeah. you don't have a choice when you, because if you go into residential areas, there's no parking. There's no parking. And you're going to have problem with your neighbors and yeah. blah, blah. So yeah. you must be an in industrial area. Industrial area. area. So you take a chance, right? Yeah. yeah. So we had a lot in our favor because there is a church across the street. Yeah. Down there. There is a billiard place. Yeah. So those are assembly places. Mm. So why can't we have our own assembly place? Assembly place, place yes. You know, we went actually to a lawyer mm. and the lawyer said, your, your legal chances are very slim. Mm. So your best bet is the political side. Mm. And that's where Start we became active with the city. city. We saw candidates yeah. and we saw the mayor and we saw everybody. Yeah. So we got involved, we supported them. And yeah. then when they won, they yeah. did not forget about us. Ah, so that's yes. that's the ah. good thing. I mean, in the in the city hall meeting where they voted on it, mm -hmm. it was unanimous. Mm -hmm. Everybody voted uh, to, have to, to, to have it. Okay. And after we got our permit, a yeah. few months later, yeah. they closed the window again. Oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah. opened yeah. that window yeah. and then closed it. Closed it. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we say it's, it's a miracle. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's a lot of sincere brothers in this mystery camp. What about building acquisition? Because we hear some similar stories with MCA that the neighboring community started protesting and they were like, did you run into similar issues? We had issues? some objections, but yeah. it wasn't it wasn't hard. Okay. I'll give okay. you an example. Yeah. Somebody that represented uh, Flex or something. So, 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 some guy, yeah. he came into some one of the hearings. Yeah. I forgot if he was like... A, a representative of one of the neighboring high-tech companies yeah. or, or or just a community member yeah he came in and he started speaking against our project okay and then some brothers took him aside and spoke to him yeah. you know later and the guy came in and i'm telling you there was like some allah's hands were in, in, at play in there they came, he came in later within the within the hearing and started speaking in favor of the project he said <laughs> in support of the project yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just amazing yeah. and then one guy yeah came in and he started crying. He's non-Muslim. He is. He was a uh, Mont, uh, Montpellier or whatever his name is. The, the guy who was the can yeah. candidate for the yeah, yeah. for the city council. He was crying. He said, "How could you not give a permit to this nice people to this to this community? We don't know the guy." Voltaire. <laughs> Voltaire. Voltaire. Yeah, Voltaire. Voltaire. His name is Voltaire. Voltaire. Yeah. So there is just there is that those kind of things that we saw along along the way. Oh, alhamdulillah. I mean, it's uh, we had challenges. It. We had a lot of doubts, wrote, but alhamdulillah, Allah made it easy. There is one guy who wrote in Melpita's post, and he said, "You're bringing." terror to our town and all of that yeah, yeah, yeah. and alhamdulillah we had a lot of support from yeah. the city we had a lot of support from the community mm -hmm. and we still do and that's why we keep telling the brother we need to be part of the community at large yeah. we need to continue to work with the city we need to continue to work with candidates mm. because you can't just get what you want and well, forget about, it, right? about it yes. you need to be part of it, part I mean, of it. we yes. don't compromise our principles right yes. Right. But we live here and we just need to be aware of our surroundings. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Words. So, Brother Nada, while I have you on camera, what can you share a message for future generations? You know, uh, if you look at our generation versus the new generation, they're going to have a tougher time than we did. Uh, you can see 
the trend of how things are happening and the challenges for the Muslim community as we having. You know, there was a lot of people who said that this masjid is closer to the other masjid. And, but in my humble opinion is, you need to have as many centers as we can have. We need to have as many school as we can have. And for us and for the youth, for whoever comes after us, take care of the youth. That's where our investment should be. And Alhamdulillah, in this masjid right now, we have, uh, you saw the, the kids that volunteered yesterday. All of them, they're memorizing Quran. They're good in their schools. They're very good in their schools, in their math, in their English, in everything. And they can communicate very well. They memorizing Quran. That's the type of a Muslim that we would like to have. Yes. You know, you understand your deen and you need to go out and work and do whatever you need to do yes. uh, to make a living and, and be good and be prosperous and be successful. Yes. So combination of both, inshallah, will be a guarantee for to continue the message moving, moving forward. But I've always tell the brothers, it's the youth. It's the youth. It's the youth. Okay. Thank you. Brother Jamal, message for yeah, yeah, coming say, generation? Say the youth thing because uh, in, one, in one of the meetings we had with one of the city folks, he was saying uh, these people are in the business of producing the next generation of Muslims mm -hmm. and caring for these kids, caring for the, the younger generation because they're going to be the leaders of the community who are going to be you know, running these messages in a few years or uh, Allah knows how, how many more days or how many more years we're going to be around. But uh, these, these younger generation people are going to take it. Alhamdulillah, right now you see a whole bunch of younger people that are running uh, in the masjid. There is still the, the older people are still around, uh, but the, 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 the younger generation is, is the one that are actually running the day-to-day -day -day business. They're, uh, they're trying to slowly phase in and phase out. Uh, we're phasing out the older guys and then the, the, the younger guys are coming in and uh, uh, with, the, with, the, with the help from Allah things, things will continue inshallah. I mean these massages are built and they're built to, to stay forever and ever. We just need to make sure that these uh, younger generations are strong enough and their aqidah strong enough and their iman to the point where these masajid continue to be masajid and they never get sold. We bought them and we wanted them to be waqf lillahi ta'ala for you know, the next five, six hundred years or Allah knows how many. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you.